and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host, Ian Duncan, and my pronouns are he, him. I will be playing Sunny Takasi, the ghoul merchant of the wasteland, and joining us this evening, uh, as always, we are lucky to have him, Xavier Trudeau Deschen. Hello, all my friends. I am back. I'm Xavier, he, him, and I will be playing Lance Burnett, the scientist and or barbarian. <laughs> Gar Gragnock the Barbarian isn't Gragnock that the, the Fallout Barbarian yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you tell me <laughs> well I am telling you also here with us we are also always, also always lucky to have her Susan Spinader I'm Susan I'll be playing Jerry the nomadic survivor of the waste I go by she her and Jerry goes by she they just to have it on the books yeah that's cool and presiding over all of this, our overseer, Alex Herrera. Hello, I am Alex. I am the overseer. He, him. I am all of the creatures in the Fallout world. Yep, the Yaogwai, mm -hmm. the blood bugs. Yes. The super mutants. Uh, all the, the guards, the turrets, the robots. <laughs> all the turrets, yes. All the Mr. Handys and the Mr. Yeah. Fistos. Do you have a favorite Fallout a creature that you like the most? One that I, I love to hate, the opponents, are probably uh, the Fire Ants from Ve oh, uh, New Vegas. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the Warrior Ants. The because they're, they're, they're just dramatically large. And there's some, <laughs> there should be more than what I... Well, obviously, you know, New Vegas had limitations, techni technical limitations, right? So they can't have that many Fire Ants and shit in there. But, like, can you imagine if they actually got to put, like, a whole colony of them in the game and it just starts overflowing out of a hill? Oh, I, I always thought that would be cool. No, burn it. Burn it to the ground. Set it to <laughs> fire. <laughs> uh, well, before we burn it to the ground, let us get back into our own wasteland. Alex, please take us away into the evergreen. The highway seemed strange to Sunny. Numerous cars and other atomic-powered vehicles lay dormant and scattered across the asphalt expanse. The morning sky was covered in a light green haze, left behind from the bombs that dropped only about 20 years ago or so. Not a sign of life anywhere within sight, but Sunny knows to be careful, even when everything appears to be calm. Sunny carefully walked up the elevated highway, past all the multicolored tombs of rust humming with low levels of radiation. Rotting corpses all appeared to be resting in the seats of the vehicles. Some had their windows and windshields blasted by the shockwaves, while others seemed only touched by rust as their occupants succumbed to the massive waves of radiation, present everywhere in the early days after the Great War. Although not a sound could be heard on this highway, Sonny swore he could hear the sounds of the pre-war world. Cars, atomic cores humming loudly on the highway, the sound of the trains zooming from his hometown of Puyallup all the way north to Seattle, the Evergreen, where he was headed to try and find a purpose, to try and make sense of why he was spared, to try and forget everything and everyone back home. The graveyard, like silence, suddenly gets ripped apart by gravel shifting behind Sunny. He quickly turns around, snapping out of his train of thought. His eyes scan the vehicles and highway behind him. Quickly he realizes he is not alone. He raises his father's hunting rifle and looks down the sights to see if he can spot the source of the noise. For a second, nothing moved and Sonny believed he was safe. But then he saw them. Like the dead rising from their graves, the green and brown seared flesh of others who the bombs blessed with this curse. The people who, like Sunny, were transformed physically to look like the walking corpses. They began to stir awake and look around themselves for whatever woke them and disturbed them from their peace. Sunny quickly ducked behind some vehicles and lowered his weapon. 
hoping for a second that these fellow victims were like him and could still communicate. He watched. Say something. Anything. He whispered to himself as he watched them stir, careful not to draw attention to himself. Sonny slowly hid behind the nearby defunct cars. Sonny counted all of them as they stood. Six ghouls in total, as they're called. He watched and waited for signs of intelligence. It slowly began to dawn on him that these six had suffered the same fate as everyone else that Sonny locked up in their basements. They'd gone feral. Damn it. Sonny whispered to himself as he slowly began to sneak away and continued his journey up the highway towards his destination. Sonny had been walking for almost the entire day. Thirst, hunger, and some pains had started to get to him. The walk might almost have been enjoyable, save for the constant obstacle course of vehicles that he had faced up to this point, with no company other than the corpses trapped in their mobile mausoleums of steel and glass, Sunny's mind began to wander. One consistent memory burned its way to the surface, no matter how much he pushed it back. Sunny's mother and father, practically foaming at the mouth, as he went up into their bedroom to check on them that morning. The snarls, their soulless eyes looking back at him, and the ferocity with which they had tried to attack him. He had seen this before, when they were still at the shelter right before everyone abandoned the fairgrounds. Mr. Ornelas was first to go, then Mr. and Mrs. Hemingway. The last one he remembered changing was Laura. All of them woke up one day and started forgetting things. Then slowly, they couldn't walk correctly anymore. And finally, they stopped being hungry for food. Sonny's attention has suddenly snapped back to the highway as he can see it descend onto the ground level. And from this vantage point, he could clearly see a small fire and a campsite off the right side, right in front of an old rail yard, long abandoned. It seemed that the current occupant was an older gentleman cooking something over a fire. Sonny cautiously walked towards the direction of the campsite, weapon drawn, and scanned anything that he could see as he looked for danger. Sonny got close enough to the edge of the highway where there would be no cover once he tried to approach this man and his camp. It's now or never to guess, eh? Sonny whispered to himself as he built whatever resolve he could muster and emerged from behind a cluster of vehicles on the right shoulder of the highway. The lone man in the camp quickly looked up and held a face of surprise but not fear just yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Easy, chief! said the man as he stood up and held his hands. I think Sonny doesn't, sit, doesn't actually say anything. If he's got his gun out, he, he hears this guy talk and he just like keeps the gun trained on him and walks up close to the fire, just sort of like keeping enough distance uh, so that he, he can't like lunge at him or anything. So, uh, like seeing if there's any like weapons close by or anything like that. Sonny quickly scans the area. The man, slightly portly, wearing survival gear with his weapons behind him, resting along a support strut of his tent. Sonny looks at the man and sees that he is sweating and fear has finally made its way onto his face. A little nervous laughter, some slow movement backwards, and the stale, deadly silence that always came before the storm of violence. Sonny realized he could take what he wanted from this man. This man had been cut off guard. Food, guns, the tent, all of it. Sonny could lay claim to this man's soul if he wanted to. All he had to do was pull that trigger. It's at this time that Sonny hears a voice in his head. Communities survive. Individuals struggle. Sonny heard the words as he pointed the barrel of his father's weapon towards the man. The ghoul remembered his mother's words as she spoke them to him in Japanese. Even after the horrors his parents experienced as children, they still believed in forgiveness, trust, but most of all community. Sonny never got to experience these things. But with the phrase floating in his mind like an idea too difficult to remove, he realized what his mother meant. He realized why his parents both still trusted their community. So Sonny sees that this guy is kind of afraid and sort of, so he goes around to the other side of the fire, looks at maybe like some food or something that's there. You got enough for two? The man, hands still up, looks nervously at, at the 
frying pan with food in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, of, of course. Um, is Sonny lowering the weapon or does he still have it pointed at the guy? I think he's still got it pointed at the guy. Then uh, he will slowly motion to like that he's going to get the pan. Like he points, hey, I'm going to I'm going to grab this. Oh, yeah. Sonny just watches him. Picks up the pan and then puts some of the food that's cooking. It looks like some kind of meat that's been cooked as well as like uh, some really uh, a lot of processed meats like spam and things like oh, cram in this case and other kind of like foods that have survived. Right. He's, they're kind of being cooked on this pan and he's going to slide them onto this plastic plate, put it on there and then hand you this this plate uh i picture like the fire in the background and this plate of food like coming up from one side uh of of the screen and sunny looks at it and like he put he slowly puts the gun down and reaches out and grabs a plate and we see both of them like holding the plate together for a split second before he pulls it out of his hand yeah the man lets go um look I, I don't mean any harm, obviously, and uh, it's clear you got to jump on me, so if you want something, you can have it. Just, I, I'm asking you not to leave me with nothing. Food will be fine. And he kind of looks at Sonny closely. You, you're not like the others I've seen. Sonny, <laughs> this is a much younger Sonny, too, and so I think he's got the countenance of a much uh shittier younger person when he says that thing about you're not like the others he just kind of like rolls his eyes look it's just uh, the other things on the on the highway the minute they saw me they ran after me they they weren't carrying guns or anything like that they i've seen them rip people apart so, I take it you've got your mental faculties about you, right? Through a mouthful of this meat, he just says, They're not things. Fair point, fair point. The people. The people I've run into on the highway. They're not people either. Okay. Either way, I, they seem to be able to go places other people can't can any points to sunny can you can you do the same thing why you got a place you need me to go i mean if you're more than willing to help uh i look let me start over and he puts a hand out like to uh, as a gesture for a handshake lester the name's lester I think Sonny's really flustered by this. I I think this is the first time that he's, like, touched another person in a while that wasn't, like, his mom and his dad. And so he looks at the hand, and then he reaches out and grabs it just real quick, and he's just like, Sonny. Nice to meet you, Sonny. Uh, yeah, look, there's this... There's this storage building, and he points to this very large. It looks like some kind of warehouse that's that's it's uh, got all of its gates down. There's some trucks turned sideways, blocking other entrances. But there's like a a sliding door that looks to have its chain recently snapped off, so it's just hanging. Um, but the door is it's this large steel door that's been slid closed. In that storage building, there's some scrap metal. There's a bunch of items that the the, the settlement that I work for or that I'm trying to help build is uh they could use it only problem is that the hallways for some reason or other have been barricaded with uh, barrels of uh radioactive stuff uh i can't really get past the first one any points uh into his tent there seems to be this like hazmat gear but it's really rudimentary rudimentary hazmat gear it looks like it's seen better days you afraid you're gonna turn into something like me no, it's just I'm afraid that it'll probably kill me before I take more than, you know, six steps in. Sonny squints at him. Where are you from? Not not that far. I, I used to live here in Kent. But the settlement that I'm from now, it's it's up north. It's in the Evergreen. 
they've built it into uh well it's it's built near a bunch of uh these shops one of the biggest ones it's it's built near one of those old goodwills so you need me to go in there and barricade some things for you well no actually any hand sunny this big empty like survival gear pack that could store a lot of things it's huge if you can get past the barrels and fill it up with the stuff that's in this back room that's literally right down the hallway in there i can't give you money or anything because i don't know if that does any good right now but i can guarantee you a spot at this settlement a lot of good people there and if you have my word they'll get you in no problem what is it about your word that goes so far who are you in this evergreen i mean (laughs) I'm. Uh, I fix things for people, up there. That's what I did before the bombs. I fix stuff. I was a little more in shape back then, but uh, I'm starting to lose some of the poundage uh, since they got me running on these supply runs. Sunny like finishes up the meal and sets it down. Okay, I'll help you with this. You'll take me up there, right? Show me around. Lester nods emphatically. Yeah, of course, Sonny. Okay. Give me the pack. Lester hands Sonny the gigantic, the gigantic survival pack. And uh, our camera cuts to black. And then we see light pour in as a man donning a hap- like a kind of makeshift hazmat suit slides open uh, a, a steel door from in front of us. The steel kind of shrieking as it goes against the, the railing that it's attached to. Uh, the man speaks kind of muffled and points down the hallway. It's back there. Uh, just be careful. I haven't been able to get past, you know, like I said, a few steps in. If you see anything in there that's dangerous, you probably shoot him with that thing you got. I'll be out here. I'll watch the door so you don't have to worry about anything, and I'll leave it open. And he pulls out a pipe pistol, or at least the proto-pipe pistols that it showed up in the beginnings right after the bombs dropped. And turns his back to Sunny and faces the outside as if saying I'll watch the door for you if there's anything in here that surprises me I'm gonna shoot you Lester turns around still wearing the hazmat helmet okay that's that's fair that's fair Sunny rolls his eyes again <laughs> and uh, turns away from the door and proceeds with caution past the radioactive barrels Lester waits outside as Sunny enters the large storage building. The hallway is long and dark and only illuminated by the barrels of radioactive material. As Sunny's visage pulls out of view deeper and deeper into this dark hallway, time seems to move for us and for Lester. First 10 minutes, then 30 minutes. Eventually an hour passes and uh, Lester seems a little upset. Let's out a huge sigh. <sighs> Shit. Maybe there was something in there. Within seconds of that, Sunny emerges carrying a large pack full of scrap metal parts, some containers of fuel, and also is now carrying a duffel bag that has barrels of weaponry sticking out of them. Lester quickly stands up helping Sonny with the gear, and then closing the door, the the steel sliding door, as he exits the structure. Holy shit, you had weapons in there? Yeah, must have been left in a hurry. Oh, here, and he puts like a a thing of cram in Lester's hand. Sonny sees the look of happiness and relief as he brings out the goods to Lester and hands him the food. Lester looks to Sonny and nods his head in gratitude and gives him a hug as he drops the cram to the floor. Oh, it's definitely like when you hug a teenager and they're just like so uncomfortable and they're just like, uh, don't reciprocate at all. He turns to Lester and he like drops the guns down on the ground and he says, how much do you think we can get for these? Lester shocked looks at Sunny. I mean, I never really thought about selling anything, but Well, they don't just give you free food and board up in this settlement, do they? He shakes his head. No, no, you gotta... They like to trade for stuff. He reaches into his pocket, pulls out 
bottle caps. It's kind of weird, but uh, and he shakes them in his hand. This is kind of what they use. A lot of the other settlements that I've seen and gone to use these as well. And he looked at the weapons again. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're worth a lot. Damn right. The ghoul once again goes back to the words of his mother. Communities survive. Individuals struggle. But her words give way to the basement door covered in chains. Something on the other side of them pounding, thudding, doing whatever it can to get out. Now camera cuts to Emmett's, the barrel of Emmett's gun, and we suit pan out to Emmett, one foot on the bed, one foot off the bed, holding the hunting rifle, pointing at Sonny. I would say the camera moves a little to the right, and we see Cassandra sitting on the couch, her eyes wide as she just stares. Let's start off with you, Sonny. So last we left off, Emmett was saying, basically, call your friends. Okay, so Sonny's there. Sonny's got his hands up. Um, yeah, he, he, he's he's totally defenseless. Um, but he's trying to buy as, he's trying to buy as much time as he can. You succeeded last time, so you can you can do that if you want. Right. He doesn't know uh, where Lance and Jerry are, but he wants to keep them out of this situation as long as possible. And like the best case scenario in this is that they're able to like see what's happening and do something about it or at the very least like get away. I don't know what Cassandra's going to do. <laughs> she, so yeah, so for this, for mechanical purposes, Cassandra's like stunned, I guess, because she's just like, what the hell is happening? She has, no, she has little to no input on the situation besides she's frightened. Yeah. So uh, with his hands up, Sonny is like, um, Emmett, uh, Emmett, come on. This is the payback we get for saving your life back there. I mean, come on. And it's also, it really strains to talk, uh, uh, Sonny, who is still injured. So he's like doing his level best, but um, he is also like coughing and choking on his words uh, as he's saying this. Emmett, moving the rifle like just a tad as if he's refining his aim, looks at Sonny. Thanks for that. But, like I said, I get a job, and I'll be damned if I let some randoms take my quarry and my pay. Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> Emmett, Emmett, Emmett. Uh, you're, a, you're a mercenary, right? I'm putting that together right now. Uh, getting hired to go after the Ubeda kid, right? Marcos. I don't want to get into specifics, Sonny. Fair enough. How about we get into this, so whatever they're paying you, I'll pay you double. He kind of opens his eye, widens his eyes and nods. Oh, really? Okay, so you can pay me about 600 caps. Yeah, well, that's pretty steep, but how about I can pay you 600 caps now, and I'll pay you 600 caps later. All you gotta do is take that gun off me and walk away from everyone. Marcos, everyone. He raises an eyebrow. I don't think you have 1,200 caps. Oh, I don't have it on me. Oh, you think I'm crazy walking around the wasteland with 1,200 caps? Emmett seems perturbed at this point. Just kind of like, <sighs> he doesn't know what to make of this. And obviously, since you are you succeeded on buying time, this is going to continue happening. We cut to Jerry and Lance, as I think Lance is holding the pit boy in his hand. Jerry's standing about two feet to his left, as they're inside this tiny little narrow storage room of guns and ammo. Lance takes a, a, f a few heavy seconds uh, looking at the pit boy in his hands, looking at the dried blood that's in it. Yeah, he, he'll, just be, he'll just be still for a few moments, um, kind of not saying anything. So, I've been trying to think of how Jerry would react to this hidden room. Okay, you got a stockpile of weapons. Advanced weaponry. That's cool. 
So I, I don't think this would be like, she'd be alert. She'd be like, oh, this guy's probably more dangerous than I thought, but she wouldn't be like, we should be afraid of him. It's more so like, okay, I have a bunch of weapons. This guy has a bunch of weapons. That's just what we do. <laughs> um, so Lance pauses. it. So she's looking at the walls going, wow, he has an energy blaster. Oh, okay, that's cool. And then she sees Lance pauses and then she'll like, peek around him and then kind of like lean over him and maybe get a little close. What you got there, big guy? He turns to Jerry with anger in his eyes and catches himself. Uh, he doesn't want to project that he's angry at Jerry. And he sort of lowers the bit boy for a second. And he, without saying anything, he shows her the, uh, the blood inside. So when uh, Lance turns with anger, she takes a step back like instantly like survival instincts kick in like oh this is a dangerous threat so it takes a step back and then looks down at the pit boy not really registering to her this is just like an artifact of the old world like oh okay <laughs> he sort of compares it to his own these belong to people I know why what is this doing here and he he, gra he, uh, he grips it tighter. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask our friend Emmett a few questions. Um, he puts the uh, pit boy down on a surface on a on a shelf, and he goes for his medical pouch, and he just tells Jerry, "Show me your wrists. I'm gonna bandage you up." Okay. Holds out hands. <laughs> and he, he proceeds to like treating the previous injuries with the handcuffs. Hopefully, mechanically, they'll like no, heal you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do the mechanical heals, so don't worry about that. But like, if you have six at points to uh, to give yourself back, you could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got. I need one. I'll give it to. <laughs> okay. 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 And now I'm remembering from last session. I I forgot this as Susan Jerry did not forget this that he was glancing towards this that's why they went here so he was probably thinking of grabbing something from here we were talking about mark and then he was glancing here okay so jerry is a little more on edge do you think he was gonna try and attack us i want to know what this is about but if he's got all this here we can't we probably can't trust this guy if he was thinking of using any of these he doesn't trust us i don't trust him and now he's got a bloody pit boy from my vault and as he finishes bandaging uh jerry you take whatever you can whatever is useful to you ammo food a better gun you take it you grab that pit boy with you you take it with you i'm gonna distract the guy and you walk behind him make sure he doesn't see you and if he pulls anything stupid you put a bullet in the back of his head Jerry nods. This is serious. She gets it. So, And then she starts looking for 10 millimeter ammo because she got that gun last time. She needs more ammo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say Jerry finds at least 15 rounds in like a, one of the, there's like these little wooden containers like that you would find, you know, for like a desk organization or whatever. But this guy has a couple of them with different types of ammunition and you find at least 15 rounds of 10 millimeter ammo in there. And any, um, any other uh, small guns? that catch your eye i would say given the time frame that this is all happening you can't really like grab gun it's not like supermarket sweep right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so 10 millimeter ammo and then pockets the uh the pit boy okay we can't really I mean, it's pretty big well it, like it puts <laughs> it in a pack <laughs> like, oh okay yeah yeah. yeah 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 sure just slides it in there as lance is leaving the small room Jerry putting the pit boy in her pack, in her pack, her like satchel bag, whatever. She triggers something to where the uh, there's like an eject, uh, a, a tape kind of comes out of the pit boy in the eject position. Oh, Jerry will look at it. Uh, to, I guess just hold on to it. <laughs> Is there like a play button, or <laughs> she'll be like, "Oh, what's this?" Jerry pushes the tape back in. And it begins to play out loud. 
Oh, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Static, be- well, you don't know how to stop it. Yeah. Static begins on the tape. And then a voice comes through. A, a woman's voice. The wound hasn't healed. Probably something to do with an infection from that thing's teeth. Static rips through the voice and causes the words to be unintelligible. If anyone finds us, please give my pit boy back to the vault. I've hidden some schematics I got for one of their bunkers in this tape. I'd also advise anyone not to go west into the bunker. And then more static ends the message, and the tape stops. Jerry will just hold on to that information, I guess. <laughs> As Jerry stares at the pit boy not being warm but playing the tape in her hand, camera cuts back to the, to the living quarters. As Emmett has the gun pointed towards Sunny and begins to say, Okay, I'm tired of this. Before he can pull the trigger, Lance emerges in the living quarters and quickly Sunny, or Emmett, I'm sorry, Emmett points the weapon towards Lance out of pure reflex. As soon as he does that, I want to draw on him. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's call it. Agility small guns DC two. All right, I'm decent at I'm decent at that. <sighs> nope. So, and that's a twenty. A compli- also, yeah, complication. We gotta respect the crit. Yep. <laughs> Even if it's mine. <laughs> so, I just throw my gun at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, just hit him in the head. <laughs> never, 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 never. Not nothing. Like Whoops. That. <laughs> so, Lance emerges from the side room. Lance, can you describe how you're coming out of the room? Is it aggressive, quick? Like, what's the what's the posture like when you're coming out? I think, yeah, he he would. His plan was to play it off like Jerry's still using the outhouse, so he would probably play it like I don't know, like just wipe his hands, close the door delicately, and without looking at Emmett at this point, and then turn around and see. The gun, the gun already pointed at him, and I think I would fluster him. Yeah, he'd put his hands up. So the gun moves to Lance as he comes in, uh, un- unaware of what's happening, but with his own agenda in his mind. Seeing the opening, Sonny quickly draws his, reaches for the ten milli, and as he draws it, I'm gonna say the complication is you fire. Oh you shit! Draw. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Gun safety, everyone. Remember yeah. this. <laughs> safety is always on. Do not point a loaded weapon at anyone. The gun gets drawn. Poof, it's, it happens so fast. You don't hit Emmett, but you shoot the wall behind him, causing a loud ringing sound in the close quarters of the room. Cassandra jumps off the couch. Good news. Sunny, I don't think you're gonna have to pay Emmett at all. <laughs> That's okay, I didn't have the caps anyway. <laughs> Cassandra leaps at Emmett from the couch and grabs the rifle, moves it out of the direct pointed it's no longer pointed at anyone. It fires off at the ground. Uh, I'll give you an opportunity to do something, Lance. Uh, Sunny, unfortunately, the complication caused you to already do something in this. I would say kind of just free form action sequence. Yeah, I took a I took a bullet off too. I felt that was appropriate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I would have missed it if you didn't. <laughs> Anything you want to do here, Lance? I'm going to run and put my foot on his throat and try to kick the gun away. That's a strength athletics. That's that's flat out. I would say DC of 1 as he is already kind of restrained by somebody. All right, I got to hit 10. It's a success and And a 20. Another crit, which we must respect the complicated crits. It seems to get complicated every time we roll the fucking dice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the deeper we got into this campaign, the more complications have occurred. I have a thing where I was keeping track. I lost track a while like an episode ago. (laughs) So Lance leaps onto this gentleman's bed, onto Emmett's bed. I would say he gets he gets his left leg right on Emmett's throat. Emmett is pinned against the headboard of this makeshift bed. Uh, and he's also technically on top of Cassandra. She's like, ah! And her weight is being forced on Emmett's broken leg. So he's screaming out in pain. 
but or at least attempting to but his windpipe is being crushed by this knee or this leg on his throat and he's just uh, cannot breathe Jerry you hear gunshots go off twice you're hearing all kinds of a shuffle back there is there anything you want to do while you're still in this room okay I was trying to think from Jerry's perspective gun shot shot start like probably she kind of hears the beginning of the scream and then it cuts off so she's like oh god so she wants to assess the situation before just going in guns blazing so she'll try to like sneak out of so room. that's going to be agility sneak i would say dc of one because everyone is very distracted okay the only one who's not distracted is sunny but he's kind of just like watching the scene unfold <laughs> yeah. like whoops i almost just shot a guy <laughs> and okay I also have this ghost perk now, so I can re-roll one of my d20s if I want. So if I give you another complication. Re yeah. <laughs> yeah, re-roll the 20 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't used Lance's complication yet, but I, I, I'm going to use it right now after this roll. So. Okay, sneak So agility. excited. Uh, that is 10 for me. That's one success. There you go. Should I just re-roll roll one to see if I get... Oh, but it could yeah. be a 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. I mean, I succeeded. I, I was trying to get a set action point, but uh, it could not work out for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going by the roles we've done so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's enough. Jerry, it is enough in this instance. And you are kind of sneakily coming by. Uh, it's, it's an opening, Xavier, so there wasn't really a door to close. I would say you probably closed the door to the... Uh, like the secret door to the side room, which Jerry now opens up, closes, and then sneaks at least up to the side of the opening where she can peek. She can see Sonny, who has his gun out, kind of like, not pointed out, but kind of in the ready position at his side. Uh, and as he has this face of worry and analyzes the situation, then you peek out a little further and you see Lance on top of Emmett, who his gun is kind of at his side as Cassandra's in pain because Lance is on her back. She's pushing the gun against the wall. Uh, so you know not to move out of the side because you will probably get shot. Um, but yeah, Emmett is, for all intents and purposes, he is disabled right now, more so than having one leg broken. Uh, Cassandra is screaming, Oh, get off my back, please! Uh, Emmett is looking up at Lance as his foot is, his uh, lower leg is on his throat, crushing his windpipe. Uh, and he's kind of mouthing the words and, and like gasping, Get off! Lance grabs Emmett's hand uh, like so hard as to crush it so he releases the gun he does so ah! uh, right. and then as soon as he doesn't have the gun he'll like remove his foot from his throat and proceed to uh, like grab him by like the, like the, the scruff of his shirt uh, and like sit him upright oh yeah, oh yeah I know what he does he sits him upright takes the same hand that he just crushed and does like one of those finger like he, he brings his finger up to the top of his hand not to break it but to like just put pressure and keep him sitting down he, t he doesn't acknowledge Cassie and he just looks like three inches from Emmett's face tells him you motherfucker have some explaining to do why the fuck is there a pit boy in your secret room Cassandra, kind of picking up on the clues as you kind of, uh, when, she, when you crushed his hand and you got off of him slightly, that's enough time for her to grab the rifle and roll off the bed onto the floor. And like on her back, she has the rifle like to her chest. It's like, Ugh. looks up at Sonny and then hands him the hunting rifle. I I take it and I put my hand down to help her up off the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she grabs it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jerry, you're watching this all unfold. Lance, you're three feet. You're three inches from this guy's head or his face. Uh, you have his finger in this weird kind of. I would say it's like a, a martial arts training which you learned in the vault during the physical, like the PE training classes from your teenage years. Like it's just basically like a 1950s American judo. Kind of just like, hold this, <laughs> hold this finger lock. See this? I have full control now. Full control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emmett in extreme pain as his broken leg was messed with his arm wasn't crushed but was uh, you know grabbed to the point of where he had to release and now his finger is in this weird lock he looks at Lance oh, I bought it I bought it from who ah there's a guy he's in he's here in St. Mark's uh, he, he sells all kinds of things literally just junk shit anything you can think of he has it uh, he releases the finger ah uh, 
can can Jerry uh, at this point slip up and then all you, all Emmett hears is the cocking of a gun and it pressed against his head? Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I did not see things going this way. Lance looks at Sunny. Thanks for taking the shot. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for coming in the way you did, Lance. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, Lance takes a few steps back now that Jerry's got the control of the situation. Actually, Lance goes to the um, the, the front door and uh, to talk to Bear that's outside. Funny you should say that. As Lance moves to the front door, it kicks open. <laughs> I would say it hits Lance. Pow! Square in the face. <laughs> Uh, not enough to knock you out, just enough to kind of like distract you as this, you know, what did I say? His height was like five foot nothing. Yeah, same as Jerry. Of, like five Same one. build as Jerry, scrawny, lean dude. Bursts in the room with machete. Ah! Screams, looks around. What? What the hell is going on in here? Uh, it seems our friend Emmett uh, 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 took umbrage with... Uh, with uh, what we were doing here. And Lance is straightening him, him out. Uh, Lance and Jerry, actually. Uh, looks good. Uh, but good hustle, kid. Good hustle. He looks around. Okay, so I, I don't need... I don't... No, c- come in here. Close the door. Come in here. Close the door. Yeah. And he motions to the machete. Okay, he closes the door. Oh, he looks at Lance. Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were standing in front of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Blood. Go sit down. <laughs> uh... He still has the machete out. He's kind of like in attack ready mode still. He's looking around the room as Sunny continues like, hey, like, you know, calm down, relax. And he's like, what? So I don't, and he kind of motions. I don't need to use. No, 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 no. I just grab his hand and like, but keep it at the ready. Keep it at the ready, chief. Yeah, keep tight. He'll nod. Okay. He'll look to sit on the couch where Lance is sitting. Then he stops and he kind of leans against the wall opposite the couch. Like, no, no, I don't want to sit next to him because I hit him with the door on accident. Cassandra now standing up. Uh sits or stands next to bear and kind of exp- you can hear her whispering explaining the situation to him as you three seem to be in control of the interrogation uh lance does this thing where he stops talking and paces around like uh in the hallway trying to calm himself down mainly because he has no idea what is actually happening yeah same <laughs> he got the answer yeah. he wanted but that's not what he expected yeah he's like what no you're supposed to be a murderer you, you killed someone so this. yeah He's kind of like letting Sonny like ask the questions. Okay, you are now uh, you're in control of the negotiations. Oh, great, good. Okay, he puts his gun away. He, in he not. I mean, he sees Lance pacing around. He seems to be like in his own thing. So he just like gives Jerry a little, like thank you, kind of like nod, and. Now there's so now there's two th- now there's so there's too many things there's like so many things. <laughs> Welcome to Fallout, the video game, yeah, the yeah. RPG, the, 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 the side RPG quest list is just like full. <laughs> yeah, this might end up being the last session I'm I'm sitting in because uh, I just like I don't don't pick up the game ever again because there's too much to do. So have fun, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> yep. I think first and foremost, Sonny is like, okay, Emmett, what are we going to do with you now? What are we going to do with you? Uh, obviously, we don't want you going after Marcos. Um, that's not going to happen anymore. We don't want to kill you if we have, if we don't have to. But uh, Emmett interrupts Sonny. I, if it makes things easier. And he points to his leg. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, but say you get fixed up and all that, uh, uh, what do you, what do you think, what do you think you'd do? Oh, I'd go after him. 100%. Bear, bear, bear jumps in. You could, you could turn him over to the leader here. The guy who, you know, whoever's in charge, put him in a jail or something. Well, that's a pretty good idea anyway, bear. Uh, good thinking. He nods. Thanks. (laughs) And he looks at the situation, and he kind of adjusts. He, he's not smiling or laughing anymore. He's like, oh, yeah, this is serious. Whoops. Okay, I'm at, uh, co- you got to come straight to me. Uh, did Corrine hire you for this? Was it Corrine? He nods. Yeah, that was her name. And she kind of runs things for the cause, right? I mean, no. She's like a, she's like a facilitator. I don't know what you'd call her. 
middle management, you know, kind of in the way to exist to just be in the way. Kind of like you guys, you merchants. And when he says this, you can feel that like he's trying to get a rise out of you on purpose. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think Sonny picks up on that, but like his throat is hurting. He's tired. <laughs> like he's thirsty and hungry. Like from the back, as he's talking, he kind of like talks to Emmett, but like not looking at him as if he's talking to himself, but out loud to Emmett. Now the thing is, you know who we are, and there's nothing stopping you from telling Corinne where we're going or where we've been. From what I know, they're all looking for us anyway. Ah, uh, no, I don't think the cause is looking for you guys. Uh, and he points back to Sunny. More to your point, I can't talk to them. They normally talk to me. They find me. They send people my way. So Jerry has no idea about the conversation beforehand. She just came in on a gunfight. <laughs> like, so she pushes the barrel of the gun against his head a little bit as she turns to uh, Sunny, just to remind Emmett that don't do anything while I'm not looking at you. <laughs> um, wait, he he's after Marcos? Do you, do you, where was he last? Because we're looking for the girl he's with. Where were you headed before the crows picked you up? Mm, well, I was picking up some information right outside of First Hill, and as the gun is still pressing against his head, or this side, uh, he closes his eyes. Uh, and then I got word from some scavers that they saw a really young, attractive couple head north. And I was going to come actually this way, but crows got me. Headed north where? Scavers aren't really good sources of information. And he looks at Cassandra when he says this. They normally will just try to do anything they can to get what you have. And when I mean anything, he kind of smiles. I mean, like, anything, if you know what I mean. Cassandra is like, you can, you can, it's a scowl, but you can hear the scowl, if that makes sense. You could just hear her, like, sucking air, like, through her teeth, like she's getting ready to move. And Bear's like, no, 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 no. Don't be gross, Emmett. Don't be gross. I didn't say anything. Jerry pushes the gun against his head. This is a Christian Minecraft Minecraft server. <laughs> oh no! Oh, and the pit boy. That's from that's from the merchant. What's his name? He doesn't really. I mean, he doesn't tell anyone his name. He just calls himself the townie. He's got all kinds of junk, uh, and he just happened to have one of these. Why did you buy it? What did you want to do with it? Well, I've heard that these things can be used for all kinds of purposes, bypassing electronic locks, console security. Uh, it's a holotape player. That's pretty useful. And he looks at, he looks towards the wall or that area where Lance is kind of pacing and says, you think I would kill a jumpsuit wearing moron in the, in the, in the wasteland? No way. He kind of interrupts him. Sorry, I was just taking a shit and then you were pointing your, your gun at a, a moron wearing a, a Volt jumpsuit. Look, you guys are more useful alive than dead, in my experience, regardless of how naive or whatever scientific experiment you've been given. You surprise me. That's all. I nod my head over to Jerry to, like, do something about his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cocky for a guy with a gun to his head. <laughs> uh, Jerry's, like, I guess pistol whip him. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no roll necessary. You guys are in complete control. Oh! He kind of like raises his head, blinks hard, ooh, spits out blood onto himself. Looks at Jerry. Remember who has a gun to their head. Emma, is there anyone knows that you're in town? Anyone looking for you or anything like that? I'm supposed to send word through our couriers here to a location... Very, very far east. It's some pre-war country club. I'm supposed to send a message to there via the couriers that, you know, either I found the kid or I haven't found the kid. What was this country club name? Give me something, Emmett. They just call it uh, Overlake. Um, does that ring any bells? Have I heard of that before? No. You've never been there. Pro okay. But, yeah, but I'm sure I would think in Sonny's many years traveling... He's heard tales of like, oh, there's supposedly this rich people bunker that they never reached. That's somewhere in this area called uh, Overlake. He never heard about never heard about it being called a country club. Um, Got it. Okay. But yeah. 
Cool. So, um, Sonny, Sonny, like, massages his throat and, um, he looks at Cassandra and, and looks her in the eye and says, you think you can, you, th- you got any problem holding a gun on him for a little while? She looks at Emmett after what he said. She shakes her head. No, it shouldn't be a problem to hold his life in my hands. Not at all. Great. Cool. Uh, we're just going to have a little discussion real quick. We'll be right back. Lance, Jerry, you want to maybe like uh, go go outside and talk this over? Uh, Jerry will push the barrel of the gun against Emmett's head. Don't try anything while I'm gone. I don't plan on it. And Jerry will do that thing where she like push it a little more and then like backs off. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave an indent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, I mean, he's got a mark across his face now from getting pistol whipped for sure. Bear, you'll be back up. Cool. Excellent. Bear draws the machete again. Nods. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I can do that. Um, does Lance look approachable? I, I, I know that he's pacing, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would follow suit, like, he would nod and follow you outside. What the fuck happened in there? I fill them in too. Like, if there's any missing information, like, this is the point where. Yeah. <laughs> I let you all know he's a mercenary for hire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, uh, I would think Sonny would be able to pick out specifics that Emmett doesn't necessarily, you know, message out loud, but Sonny would have caught from context just from being alive for so long and from seeing different kind of mercenaries out in the world. This guy's a tracker, like, through and through. So, yeah, if we go outside, I just turn to the two of you and I'm like, what are we going to do with this guy? I mean, he does have a broken leg. He's not going everywhere. It doesn't sound like he's going to be giving up Marcos. <sighs> what do we want to do with him? Uh, we could try throwing him in whatever they got that serves as a jail here. Or I guess we could just ice him. Uh, I don't really want to do that if we don't have to. But what do you think? I think we could send him to the hospital. They might be able to treat his leg, but it takes longer to uh, treat a broken jaw. Oh, you want to bust something up more on him, huh? Unless you stop me. Hey, after what I saw, Lance, Lance I'm, I'm not going to stop you. No, I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't do it. Listen. I don't know what we should be doing. I don't know what the best course of action is. Um, But he's in the way. And I just don't want these idiots at Union to come shooting us down or send send more assholes like Emmett after us. Well, dead men tell no tales. You know what I mean? <sighs> I came out here because I thought I could be doing something differently than what I was doing at the vault, but it's all happening again. I just keep breaking legs and breaking faces, and every time I try to help people and fix them, it goes wrong. We can just ice this guy, but he's going to be, whether it's in a jail cell or a hospital, he's going to be in bed for a while. Lance, you doing okay? It sounds like you're going through something, and I know this isn't the best time, but I just want to make sure you're okay moving forward. Just give me a good night's rest, and I'll be okay. It's just, those are hard to come by lately. You're right. That's a good idea. We've been going at 10, 11 for a while now. Maybe we just need to take a, a little break. Why don't we do this? Let's tie this guy up here. Make sure he can't make any noise or go anywhere. Why don't we hit up this merchant here? See if we can't um, get a few provisions and find out where he got this pit boy. And get a rest we'll see what we want to do with uh our friend here that sound okay yeah that sounds fine but are you okay putting all this on cassie and bear i think the way emmett spoke to cassie i don't think there's any love lost there and if they're able to you know put the feet up keep a gun on him and fill the bellies uh, i think they'll be okay i like to think i'm a pretty good judge of character <laughs> <laughs> uh lance looks at jerry how are you doing he kind of looks at your wrists glad to be free i th- i think we do need a good night's rest all of us did he technically do anything illegal that would get him in jail 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if we just if we just go and say, "Hey, this guy's trying to kill somebody. He hasn't yet, but we don't want him to." I don't know if that uh, goes for incarceration around here. And if we kill him, we might get in jail. I mean, it doesn't sound like he'd be missed. <laughs> True. Asshole. Jerry almost says underneath her breath. When I grabbed a pet boy, there was a tape in it, and it played. If it's any consolation, I think the owner of this died from poison before this was taken off. And it's a woman. Do you still have that tape? Oh, yeah, of course. And she takes it out of her pack and hands it over. Yeah, he'll start playing with it now that, like, things have kind of calmed down a little bit. Like, would it function if it's not on an, on an arm? It's functioning like a, like an iPhone or like a, a smartphone with a, uh, from being locked. Like, you could still do basic operations from it. And one of those basic operations is open the tape deck, eject, or play tapes, uh, as well as use the flashlight function on the Pip-Boy. Uh, yeah, I'll play the tape. The woman's voice on the tape says the wound hasn't healed, probably be something to do with an infection from that thing's teeth. If anyone finds this, please give my pit boy back to the vault. I've hidden some schematics I got from one of their bunkers. I'd advise anyone not to go west into bruh, and then it cuts off. Last looks at Sunny into bruh? Like, what's west? West is brotherhood territory. That's probably what she means. And what about those bunkers? Would I be able to put together that the bunkers are brother brotherhood stuff? You, so Sunny was never you've never seen these things, but there's rumors that the Brotherhood, when they first crashed and started laying waste to the smaller settlements, they started building bunkers that were underneath where these settlements existed. The rumor is that Garfield had one of these bunkers as well after the incident at the night market. It's where the Brotherhood started building the base. Could be valuable information. Lance nods. Alex, can I try to access the Pip Boy? Try to hack it, unlock it? Ooh, you can, yeah. This is going to be, uh, let's call it intelligence. Boop, boop, beep, boop. Science. Difficulty three. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to buy an actual boy. <laughs> I buy a die. You buy a die. That's fine. And I get one. I uh, need to hit 11 three times. Go! Oh <laughs> my god, no! I think someone's going to start taking some hacker perks. And, and it, it doesn't have to be Lance. It literally, some, anyone, any one of you three needs a hacker perk because I think that's the one thing you guys don't have. <laughs> I didn't None see Xavier have. fall down, so I yeah. thought he just got up and walked away for a <laughs> second. <laughs> no, no. Oh god. So, just for, for our audience, for our listeners here. Three dice, 20, 12, and 20. And on this show, we must respect the crits. That's two complications. Can we rename so. the show? Oh. Just <laughs> <laughs> it's called Complications. This one hurts all sort the of places. The show yeah. is called Complications. So here's you arm, here's the You deal. arm this pit boy. <laughs> yeah. It New blows up. Core is going to detonate. I throw it back inside the safe house. <laughs> Bear, soccer, solved. Bear, bear bicycle kicks it out. That's the complication. Yeah. Like bicycle kicks it out. <laughs> um, so the first thing is first. Oh. Your attempt at hacking this pit boy fails miserably to the point where on the display screen, the vault, the vault boy has an angry look with his hands at his sides <laughs> after like, you know, five minutes of fiddling with it. And he puts his hand up and does the finger wag as you've seen before. It's a very similar finger wag to the one you saw on Irma when she was like, no, no. Uh, getting familiar with those. <laughs> yeah. And as you do that, the screen kind of does the Tetris kind of breakdown. And the screen just reads, this device has been locked for 2,000 years. Please try again later. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, wordlessly, you can see Lance, like the look of defeat in Lance's face. Not anger this time. This is just like pure, like pure defeat. <laughs> oh, Sunny goes. Sunny uh, goes. Uh, Lance, Lance, does your does yours uh, do the tape thing? Can yours play tapes? Yeah, that, that's that's not a problem. I just 
I don't think we're going to be seeing those schematics anytime soon. Maybe you will someday if you keep it close. <laughs> so, Sunny will see the schematics. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't got anything going on for 2,000 years. Yeah, I can wait. Not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we do have tapes that we got from Green's house. Want to pop those in there and see what's going on? Might give us some insight on what our next move is. All right, I'll start popping them. Jerry's gonna look around first. <laughs> I'll put the volume at the like minimum, or we can share earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry, Jerry, looking around, it's I would say you guys got to this place. I believe it was morning to early afternoon when you first got here. Let's say it's mid afternoon now, and as I mentioned before, the safe house is located in an area that's connected to the main one of the main sections of the market called the covered market because there's all these different color tarps that have been set up not a lot of people but it's enough to be like a reasonable crowd i would say 12 to 13 people walking around not including the merchants they see you but kind of like regard you at first as like oh newcomers and then they kind of skitter away from you like they're afraid of you three so they give you a nice wide berth i don't like that how you said in the open <laughs> well I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be there's no ulterior motive here. I just want to make sure I'm reading the scene correctly yeah I mean yeah if we got rel- yeah, some privacy sure we kind of like huddle up around it around the pit boy Jerry hands Lance the first tape because Jerry had all the tapes all six of the tapes and we're just going to say that they play in order because that makes sense uh, the first tape slides in Lance closes the deck hits play a woman's voice comes on the other side Marco is a bright young man. Not as susceptible as I was led to believe, but I can mold him with time. The hatred for the Brotherhood is really strong in this place, and he is no exception. I guess I can lean on that more. The tape ends. Uh, the next one gets handed over to Lance and played. Same woman's voice. It took some doing, but Marco is willing to help the cause. We can start him with some supply runs or drop-offs. I'll have to wait and see what Tobias says in terms of what kind of leash we need to give this kid. Won't be long now. Again, two beeps indicating that the tape is over. The next one's handed over. Same woman's voice. The mission is going well. Marco is embedded in First Hill's maintenance team. Threatening his family really made the difference in convincing him to move to First Hill. The data he is acquiring and sending back is pretty substantial. There's also things that we already knew. The personnel reports, however, these are gold mines. Knowing that there are still some Brotherhood holdouts in the city is huge. Getting them to disappear will be a much easier job now. Hopefully, Bernard has some men who are up to do the dirty work. The next one is handed over. I'm starting to see some cracks in the boy's resolve. One of the targets, one of the last holdouts, has a daughter. And he seems to have some issue with using her. I hope he hasn't gotten native on me, or worse, decided to switch sides. No, he's not that rash. I guess I'll have to send someone to reinforce our mission on him soon. The next tape. Marco has gone to the wind. He took one of the target's daughters with him. Not sure where he went, but I gotta find him. I'm hiring outside help to track him down and hopefully get to him before anyone else does. This fucking kid. Jerry hands Lance the final tape. It's almost as if it's recording from some sort of uh, an area recording as opposed to a directional recording of like a microphone directly on someone. You hear a kind of a, a door slide open, or a mechanical door or one of those electronic doors slide open and then close. And then a heavy boots walking into a carpeted surface and a voice. Hello, Karine? It's Bernard, checking in. I guess I'll just... I guess we just guard it. All right, we're going to maintain a two-people uh, patrol around the area. Hey, computer, uh, just let me know when I need to 
you know, check in again. And then you hear the familiar tone of Irma. Affirmative, Bernard. And the tape ends. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Hello, survivors, vault dwellers, and denizens of the wastes. Thank you for joining me in the mid-roll. Gonna make this one a short one so you can get right back to the episode. I want to say thank you to everyone who entered into any of our giveaways. We've had some incredible reviews and interactions with our listeners and audience. Because of your feedback, you've let us know what you like about the show, the things we're doing right, and most importantly, it helps others find our podcast. Other listeners and tabletop RPG enthusiasts, Star Wars and Fallout fans, and other people like yourselves who love stories and want to make their world and community a better place. Thank you all so much. We're about halfway through our Fallout campaign, and moving forward, instead of giving away single copies of the Core Rulebook to only one of you, we're expanding our gifts to all of you. Our discount code for 10% off will be ongoing for the rest of the campaign. Right now, you can get 10% off any Fallout RPG stuff if you use our code RTC10. That's RTC10 at checkout. If you go to our custom URL, modifius.net slash respect the crit, or modifius.us for better US shipping rates, and use our code at checkout, you'll get 10% off all Fallout 2D20 RPG stuff. That includes books, bundles, everything. If you've been holding off getting a core rule book or just wanted some authentic Nuka-Cola bottle caps, now is the time. Use RTC10 at checkout, and thank you to everyone who supports us, who encourages us, and who is sharing us amongst their circles and communities. It really means a lot to us, and we would never be able to build the relationships we're building without you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you to our friends at Modifius Entertainment for their continued support, and thank you for listening, for downloading, and for leaving us your feedback. Now, let's get back to the Evergreen. Kareen has convinced Marco to work for the cause via threats and f- kind of feeding off his uh, hatred towards the Brotherhood. His mission was to go to First Hill, work in some form of infrastructure, and uh, steal information and send it back to her. He was also supposed to find specific targets who were Brotherhood holdouts or people who were sympathizers for the Brotherhood. One of these targets was, in fact, uh, the old woman, V's mom. Amelia. In researching her and keeping an eye on her, he met V and fell in love with her and is not going to finish his mission. Instead, is taking V out of the picture because he's afraid. Or obviously, there's, he's in love with her, so he's afraid she'll either be used for collateral or something, but he had to remove her and himself from the equation. He's fleeing from the cause. He, is, uh, he was uh, unwillingly a part of them and is now trying to escape. Uh, the cause due to this action, is seeking him down because they don't want him to fall into Brotherhood hands or they don't know if he's switched sides. They're unsure of what's happening. And then also, the last tape was Bernard basically cementing himself as one of the many muscle, muscly arms of the cause. And it sounded like she left without telling anyone that she was going... I th- maybe to look for Marco like on her own yeah it sounds like she hired Emmett and has decided to go on her own as well which means you there is a third party looking for him <sighs> oh boy <laughs> things aren't complicated enough the three of you are still standing outside just finishing listening to all these tapes and kind of piecing together the puzzle like some kind of uh, you know 1950s gumshoes 
Well, I'll be a mole rat's asshole. Amelia's a Brotherhood sympathizer. I don't know much about the Brotherhood, but I thought their one big thing was that they don't like ghouls like you, right? They don't like anyone who ain't Brotherhood. Why'd she come to you then? That just doesn't make sense. I think she was desperate. Uh, and she didn't come to me, she came to Lance. Well, maybe this is what makes her turn around, you know? Maybe that's her turning point. Maybe that's her second chance. Maybe after all this, that's the one good thing we've done. And maybe she's one less target on the cause's hit list. That's the other thing I can't square. Why is the cause going after civilians? That doesn't make it. That's not right. That's the, the civilians don't got any power. Sure, maybe she's a sympathizer and tuh, spit to the brotherhood, but she, she she don't got no power. She don't, she, she's not doing anything. Why the cause going after her? I don't know. This thing got me all messed up. Both sides seem pretty shitty to me. Well, one side is actual fascists. And that's the Brotherhood. They crash-landed here. Not even their home. Not even their community. They just came in and said, this is ours, and started shooting people and taking things away. They're not even from here. They don't contribute anything. They don't defend anyone. They don't stop any crime. They're a militarized occupying force. This is why we should abolish the Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> Defund the Brotherhood. The all Brotherhood are bastards. Oh. All Brotherhood <laughs> are bastards. But from what we heard, I don't think the cause is going about it the right way. I don't know what we can do about that, but I don't know. Hey, hey, Sonny, I think what we're, we're doing is a start. Let's let's just focus on finding Marco and V. We could go around and Emmett said they were coming north, right? To here, he didn't have time to intercept them he he we got in down at the same time he did let's go ask the townie let's go let's go get some supplies ask the townie if he saw like a pretty couple come around and you work your magic and then he'll pay us to take stuff off of him <laughs> that sounds like a good plan lance but about that i haven't been myself since i got it darted in my neck from those crows before we go you think you might be able to take a look at this is it infected <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah lance takes he, he, it surprises lance i guess he kind of does notice that your voice is different now he starts to inspect it yeah it's a simple medical check i think just to you can't fix the wound, but you can treat an injury. I can, I can, I think what it. the uh, rule is that I can render the effect of an injury. Like I can nullify it, but it can come back. Yes, correct. So I got to hit 14. Come on, Lance. No 20s, no 20s, no 20s. This, this <laughs> one's the right one. Yes. Yay. Yay. Hey, that's... One action point. <laughs> one action point. Woo, you guys, you did it. Finally. Good enough. Damn, this is like the first time you guys have been without an action point for so long. Like, it's a drought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Lance. Yeah, he, he, he puts some paste in the in the tiny tiny puncture, and then he puts some medical tape over it. I'm like, well, I don't have much experience treating these kind of wounds on you know this kind of flesh, um, but this should, you know, you should get your windpipes going again. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, doctor, your hands are so gentle. I can't see any difference. <laughs> <laughs> your negative stat is gone, Sonny. Uh, <clears throat> oh, good. Um, however, if you do not receive proper medical attention in 24 hours, it will come back. Yeah, right after that happens... Um Jerry's going to speak up. Um, what do we want to do about Emmett? I, 
I know I'm the one that usually shoots people, but I don't, I don't want to execute the guy. I feel the same way, Jerry. I, I, and you shouldn't have to do that. Um, <laughs> Emmett's a, a piece of shit, but I guess he doesn't deserve to die. We just need him out of our hair for a little bit. Here's what I think. Why don't we go to the courier he's talking about and send a message for him to where the the country club that he's supposed to send it and just a message like hey go pick up your boy and we just tie him up and leave him maybe they'll bo- leave him with a bottle of water some food something like that but just so he can't get around and someone will come pick him up uh, but by then hopefully we'll be on our way sounds good to me yeah let's roll with it he also has a big stash of weapons in the back he did try to kill you, so I'd be okay with taking those. Oh, yeah, we're definitely taking those. <laughs> Show me where the merchandise is. <laughs> oh, can I thumb through this diary real quick, too? This yes. little book? I mean, we've got a lot of stuff to do, so I'm kind of skimming it, but I, more thoroughly than running out. Uh, from the back of a house yeah you can actually scan it i'm gonna give you the rough the rundown of this i I imagine you're like supervising the operation so you and you're like telling lance how to like where to put emmett and where to tie him up and like telling jerry how many guns to take or like no no no, put that one in the bag and take that one and like on yourself and blah 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 uh meanwhile you're like reading this thing i i feel that 100 percent. yeah yeah (laughs) so this book it's not a journal more so than it is some kind of ledger of uh like you recognize it kind of is very similar to like a business ledger right like acquisitions you know uh x amount of ammo was received on this day from this drop there's some names on there you recognize on in the first few pages of merchants from varying settlements varying settlements that are independent quote unquote who have made supply runs for the cause in days as recent as a few weeks ago your boy with the drugs, I forget his name, but he was one of them. He's made supply runs for the cause as well. Oh, yeah, the uh, one who set, who got, volun- got volunteered, volunteered for, guard for the guard duty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's on there. A few from Goodwill, um, which is a notoriously kind of cause-centered settlement. Um, there are open cause, like, sympathizers or... Uh, propagandists, whatever you want to call them, who live there and continue to try and recruit for the cause openly. Uh, There are also a few Brotherhood who show up in that town from time to time. Um, There have been, you know, some fights in the streets and things like that. But because that specific settlement is governed by like a council of basically what you consider the highest echelon of merchant life is a group of these merchants who run that town, which is why it's been on the map and so prosperous. There are, as you thumb through the pages and you see all these kind of merchants' names from different settlements, then you get to the page that sparked your interest the first time, where it mentions that Marcos has been compromised. Now, with further inspection, there are other names on this list. Uh, There is a list of what you assume are Brotherhood sympathizers because of Emma's name at the top. You recognize maybe two or three. um, Kurt Amelia, right? Yeah, sorry, Amelia, yeah. Uh, you recognize a, a, f- a few um, First Hill Sec guards' names on there as well. And then you see the head of security for First Hill is also a known Brotherhood sympathizer. Here's the real question. Longley isn't on the list, right? <laughs> long, long, yeah. yeah, I was just long, about to long. ask. Thank you, Susan. I was just <laughs> looking for his name to see if he, to ask about his if he was on the list. Abad Longley is not on the list of sympathizers nor on the list of cause agents. The name of the chief of security, William Tadahanda. And then there are a few that like you recognize as kind of like community centric leaders, you know, not necessarily on the political, uh, in the political arena of First Hill, but more so down in the streets, kind of like you, you consider yourself to be kind of like a street sage in a sense where people know they can come to you for stuff. Yeah, uh, there are others on that list who are very similar. One in particular is like a, a community religious leader. His name is uh, Nell. It's Nell Whiff. N E L L. His last name is W I F F. 
Now Whiff is like a, a religious community leader within First Hill. He lives in that in that destroyed church and provides for the um, the unfortunates and kind of acts as their spokesperson from time to time. And he is co- he's a cause agent or he is brotherhood brotherhood a sympathizer brotherhood sympathizer. Okay, so this is just to clarify. This is a like a ledger uh, of an accounting of goods cause agents who are or merchants who are helping them move goods and a list of brotherhood sympathizers of of them are Amelia we know a couple of first hill sec guards William Tata Honda who is the head of security and Nell Whiff who is like a religious correct. leader okay correct yeah and then of course there's a list of the agents that are under Karin's command oh so this has a list of cause agents yeah the last few pages are the list of cause agents that has it has uh your boy mark marcos yeah marco or whatever his name he's going by that was a can i just say that was a really uh like bad uh, pseudonym for him to go under that's like (laughs) obi-wan kenobi going by old ben (laughs) like if marco going by mark (laughs) have we watched uh shang chi yet I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, <laughs> it's, there's there's something very similar in the movie about that. <laughs> so when I saw it, when I saw it in theaters, I was like, I didn't feel too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a, I actually love it. Um, sorry, you were saying. Uh, yeah, the list of it. So there's a bunch that are like they have the location. So Mark Marcos is, says First Hill, and then the note underneath is like Marcos has been compromised. Is the note underneath, and it seems like it's scribbled like. Uh, compared to the rest of the handwriting, the, the Marcos has been compromised is scribbled aggressively. Okay. Uh, and then you see a couple other names. You don't recognize any of these other cause agents. They These names have no significance to you. Got it. Am I able to discern at all who might be like um, an operation leader of this at all? Like a name of who is at the top? Mm, not from this notebook. There's nothing in there. But you did. you heard a name on the tapes that Karin had to get approval from somebody. Oh, the name, he did. The name reminded you. It's you heard Tobias's name mentioned on, I believe, the second or first tape. Oh, Tobias. Okay. Yeah, and Tobias seems to be her supervisor, or the person in charge of her. Okay, got it. You're tying up Emmett right now, right? Yeah, yeah. and getting guns, or, or and seeing what 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 we can. Woo woo! What we got? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna we're gonna run this as a salvage. Uh, as like yeah, so they have this whole thing about like oh how do you scavenge or salvage from a uh, an unsafe place? This is one room. We're salvaging from one room. I would like Jerry to roll this. Oh okay. I need you to roll a d6, and this is going to determine the rarity of what you find. Okay. <sighs> Four. Four. That's I think that's the highest you can get on the on the rarity. So whoa! Oh, really? If it was a fi- it was a five or six, I have you re-roll. Okay, did it? She did it. Nice. <laughs> the first thing Jerry sees when she goes in here, this is considered a small gun, which I don't agree with this how they set this up because I saw this and I was like, that's not a small gun. <laughs> <laughs> what she mistook for a laser weapon, in fact, is something else. It looks like a makeshift weapon created with a bunch of kind of different parts attached to the side it still has this it has this kind of wooden shoulder mount that looks like it was taken off of a hunting rifle uh the chamber is cylindrical and large uh and attached within this chamber are these large kind of iron spikes i would say they're probably as long as like a like a like a soda bottle uh from top to bottom made out of pure iron you can see that there is a a section attached to the barrel that seems to be some sort of pressure generator which is probably the method of propulsion for this Uh, this is the railway rifle and beneath that you're going to find uh, a container of about 10 these railway spikes which are the ammunition for this weapon sounds very good and small (laughs) <laughs> it's a small it's it's a small it's a gun. Small gun, really? It's a small gun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got proficiency in those guys. <laughs> uh and I'll give you one more. Further along the wall, there is a pistol, or at least what you thought was a pistol in your quick analysis, 
Looking at it, however, now you see this is actually, this is an energy weapon. As you pull it off the wall, it's it's very kind of non, non-aerodynamic, non-ergonomic design. It's a pistol with this housing on the barrel on top that has these two, or this kind of metallic casing that's open with a centrifuge and some kind of circuitry and wires coming off of it. This is a laser gun. Seems like we could get a lot of money. <laughs> And then you find ammunition for, I would say, everyone's gun. So you find you have fifteen. You have the fifteen ten millimeter bullets. Mm-hmm. You'll also find about twenty uh, dot forty five point forty five for your pipe pistols. I would say, Jerry, you had enough time to search this room, right? You find the ammo. You found the two guns, the two that are the best to use as you look at them. And as you're gonna exit, your foot kicks something underneath this like workbench that's attached to where the pit boy was and the little the little cabinets of bullets. Your foot kicks something and. It sounds like glass, and you, like, stop as you have your arms full of, like, the guns and the bullets. <laughs> and you kind of look down at, at the floor, and you grab something with your foot, pulling it out of the shadow. It's a large kind of moonshine jug full of about 120 caps. Ooh. Struggling to hold everything, goes down and, like, grabs it with the crook of her elbow to add it to the stash. <laughs> Yeah, you just grab the lip of the moonshine bottle like, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> uh, so while this is happening, tell me how you guys are tying it. What are you doing to Emmett? How are you restraining him? Like, there's not a quieter place than anywhere else. I assume in this place. No, the walls are equally as thin. Yeah, outhouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he he looks up at you as you're trying to figure out what to do with him. He goes, you know. I'd much rather prefer being locked in a jail cell than being tied to my bathroom. <laughs> you could tell uh, Samir, you could tell him that, uh, you know, I roughed you guys up. They'd lock me up for a few days if that's what it takes. I just don't want to be locked in this bathroom. Yeah, we might bring it up with him. Uh, for now, Lance, just uh, tie him up to a pipe here and make sure that it's, uh, that it, that it's tight. You just hear him like, like this huge sigh, like, Ugh. Lance gets it over over with at this point. He doesn't really want to talk to him at either. He's yeah. like, all right. All right, tie him up to the pipes. Uh, there's a bottle of water left for him. And the last thing you see when you close the door is him look at the bottle of water and just be like shaking his head. Like In the last words, I can't believe it. Door closes. The yeah, house door closes. Okay, so you have... And then as the door closes, he sees Jerry walking out with <laughs> all the guns, the bullets, the jug of caps. Cassandra and Bear are in the living room watching you as you all come out. And they see the guns and everything in, in uh, Jerry's possession. Bear looks at Cassandra and then back to the group. So, uh, what do we do? <laughs> uh, Jerry, uh, holding all of her loot. Hell if I know. What Bear's trying to ask is, do you need anything from us? Or are we free to continue with our business that we had? Yeah, you're fr- uh, Hey, listen. We're gonna send word to th- this guy's handlers uh, to come and pick him up. So, you got some time to just chill here for however long you want. Um, we're gonna be heading out because we got stuff to do. Really appreciate your help. Uh, really glad that you're alive. Uh, but yeah, feel free to hang out and uh, go about your business. Uh, and hey, if you ever in First Hill, stop by Sunny Sundries and I'll get you the family discount. She looks up there, who looks at her as well, and then they both look back at, at Sunny. Cassandra kind of nods. Sure, yeah. If I'm ever in First Hill, I'll look you up. But I'm normally out in the wasteland more more often than not. I just something about finding just places full of junk. That's more my speed. Well. Hey, you know, we always got to resupply. So if you're ever interested on making a few caps when all this is over, come and find me. Uh, We might be able to work you through the internship program. She kind of... We got got a new space that just opened up. (laughs) Okay. Sounds good. And she'll nod to the group. Look at Bear and nod, and then she leaves the front door like she's... Base. she's bouncing before she leaves the door uh uh jerry's gonna lean over to uh sunny hey i found a bunch of caps you want to 
give him some. You found a bunch of caps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she holds up her elbow. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course I don't want to give them some. No. I mean, they were kidnapped, too. Jerry, 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 we got so much to buy. Uh, uh, hey, hey! Cassandra! She turns around. I, like, uh, grab a bottle of water or something <laughs> from, from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I throw it to her. Uh, for your trouble, and thank you. She catches it. Oh, well, thanks. It's clean. Looks like it. And she looks to Bear. Good luck with your whole thing. And then she looks at the group. And I hope you find that guy and the girl you're looking for. Yeah. And she... She'll leave if there's nothing else. She'll just exit the house, the shelter. Goodbye. (laughs) Bear looks at the door, then looks at the group. I got a long way to go. Um... But it was nice meeting everybody. I don't know if I'm supposed to get something or if you get something for me. Uh, but yeah, I got to go really far. So um, good luck. And he backs up. Hey, are That's- you equipped for this? <laughs> there, are you equipped for this at all? You're, I see the machete, but. Oh, I don't know. I mean, like. I have some water and some food in my bag. I stole some of Emmett's clothes. I hope that's okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I'm pretty quiet. Like, I, I try to hide and let people move around me instead of fighting them. It's kind of how I was raised and trained. But I think I'm going to go home. Yeah, I think you. I think you should. Where's home? I can't tell you. I'm not allowed. Says who? My home. Well, you're not in your home, so rules don't apply. I guess you're right. I kind of broke one of the main rules, too. You're not supposed to leave. Oh, there you go. If you broke one, you might as well break another. It's a place that's, like, really, really far west. Uh, It's called uh, The Wood. And nobody can really find it on a map because that's how we like it. But I can find it. I'm I'm going to go home. I'm going to apologize for leaving. And hopefully they don't kick me out forever. Okay, well, sounds like a nice place and uh, you are a nice kid. He nods. Okay. Just kind of stared back blankly. And he uses his thumb to point. I should probably go because it's very far. Like, yeah. really far. <laughs> okay, be safe, Bear. So go! <laughs> And he keeps looking at Jerry the whole time. Okay, I'm going to go now. And then back to the group. (laughs) And he just leaves. (laughs) Boy, he wanted to stay so bad. (laughs) And I like to think while all of this is happening, Jerry's completely clueless. She's like struggling with the guns and like eventually just like hands one over to Lance. (laughs) Jerry, I think that guy uh, had the hots for you. What? Bear, I think he had the odds for you. I'm just saying. I mean, he was burning a hole through you with his eyes. <laughs> Barely turned around to get through the door when he backed out to go home. Oh. Well, he's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Jerry. Let me tell you something. I've been around for a long time. And, y- you know, it's hard to find love so if there's uh you know if if there's a connection you gotta sometimes you gotta just reach out and grab it you know take those opportunities and just run with them that's what makes life so wonderful to live well i I can't grab him he's gone now so just gonna sell these guns (laughs) none of you have heard of this place i mean obviously not lance or or jerry but yeah sunny this isn't place like i don't think you've ever heard of this place I, i yeah uh, if just, he if it's, he's it's, from uh, somewhere that's not like a, a trading settlement, so he's never heard of it. And he said another thing that piqued your interest. He said it's west. The only thing you know that's west. Everything that's west in that little like peninsula is brotherhood territory. So 
if there's a secret settlement right under their noses, it's kind of a fact that you kind of like you smile at the thought that there's a group of people that are surviving right underneath the Brotherhood's noses or somewhere near them and they don't even know about them. I would say as our as our group is inside Emmett's home, packing things up, getting ready to go sell the wares that they're willing to part with to this mysterious merchant known as the townie, our camera exits the house. Kind of similar to what happened in uh, First Hill where it kind of had the overshot view of the settlement of First Hill. But this time, the settlement is St. Mark's which is denoted by the large cathedral in the center or the northern section of the settlement with the tarps of the multicolored covered market to the north. The sound of motorcycles revving can be heard in the distance. First one, then two, then three. And our camera slowly zooms in on the section northwest, northeast of the settlement. It cuts to the front of what looks like some sort of highway patrol station as a garage door opens and the headlights of a dozen of these motorcycles turn on. I guess something's never Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crits Wasteland Adventure Fallout Evergreen. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. It's easy, free, helps other people learn about the show, and we love to read your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or come chat with us in our official Discord server. Jerry is played by Susan Spinader, who you can find on Instagram at Suze Laluz. Lance Burnett is played by Xavier Trudeau de Chen who can be found on Twitter at XavierTD. Sonny Takase is played by me, your host, Ian Duncan. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at iDunks. Our guest GM for this game is Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at A.E. Herrera or on his Twitch channel, WadeWolf10. The original music in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose info and credits can be found in the episode notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to hear more of their work and tell them how much you like their music in our show. Our outro song is Some Things Never Changed by Gavin Dunn. You can hear more of his work on Bandcamp and YouTube at Miracle of Sound. The Fallout 2D20 RPG system is licensed by Bethesda and published by Modifius Entertainment. Special thanks to our friends at Modifius for donating prizes to our giveaways for this campaign. You can learn more and grab your own copy of the official Fallout RPG by visiting modifius.net slash respectthecrit. Special thanks to the team at Fallout Cascadia for use of their music. You can learn more about this incredible, ambitious Fallout 4 mod at falloutcascadia.com. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the wasteland. You liked the ride, Ian? How, what did you think? What was the, your your favorite moment in uh, Rise of the Resistance? Well, I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to give it away. I'm okay with spoilers. <laughs> I, I do like when you, like after your little queue thing, like after the shuttle thing, when you arrive at the, oh, yeah. the main ride, I that's cool. That reveal yeah. is really neat. And it was done. Oh, and the, there was like a woman who came in dressed as an Imperial officer. And she was like, everybody get out now. And I was yeah. like, oh, spit in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, we had a dude. We had like a, 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 a large, like a tall kind of portly dude. And he's like, all right, stop standing around. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, yeah bro. Let's go. Yeah. If this guy gets in my face, bro, I'm getting kicked out of Disneyland right now. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go.